can hear me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a blessing to be gathered again this afternoon for our midday connection. It's always a blessing to be gathered at this time, you, me, all of us, to share the word and to spend some time in prayer. And I tell you what, this season of teaching on finance, money, and how God wants us to be good custodians of his divine supplies is so key. And I'm so blessed to know that you are taking these teachings, you are receiving them, and you are applying them to your financial life. Yeah, yesterday was uh, uh, day number seven in this series of Genesis of Debt. And yesterday we spoke about instant gratification. And that is something that we all struggle with. Some have a mild struggle, some have excessive struggle, but whatever your level is, it's a struggle. And somebody will say, well, what is instant gratification? It's just that desire within you to have an experience of pleasure and, and that pleasure, you want to have it without delay or deferment. You want it and you want it now. It's called instant gratification. And this is one of the reasons why we always find ourselves in financial challenges because we are craving for things that we are not financially ready for. And it is all uh, on, the, on the foundation, on the fact that we want it and we just can't defer or wait for it. And, and it, it calls for a lot of prayer, asking God for the Spirit of God, because one of the virtues of the Spirit of God or the fruits of the Spirit is patience. Having that kind of desire to want something, yet there is this restraint within you. And that can only happen when the Holy Spirit is activated. He's the only one that can hold that desire, that pleasure, that desire to have that instant fulfillment and instant pleasure. It's only the Holy Spirit that can help us out of it. And I pray that as we go through this teaching, the Spirit of God will grant you the strength to overcome every desire, every pleasure, all the things, cravings within you that you want, you just want to fulfill and can't wait. Reason why you find yourself in all kinds of unnecessary debt is my prayer the Holy Spirit will help you. Well, this afternoon, we're going to move right along and I wanted to share our pages, tag somebody, invite somebody as we take point number eight today. And today I'm talking about something <laughs> I, I, I guess I'm going to be stoned for this topic. I call it laziness. Laziness. There comes a time in our life where we just fall into this slum of laziness. Even if you're hardworking, you get those bouts and moments in your life where you just don't want to be bothered with anything. You just want to go to sleep. You just want to take it easy. You just don't want to be bothered by anything. Listen, there is nothing wrong with you taking time off. Even Jesus, when his ministry was booming, Bible says he withdrew from the crowd and went to a solitary place. We know what he went to do there. He went to pray. But there comes a time where you need to pull off from all the activities around you just to cool off your head sometime, just to get a moment for yourself. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you allowing yourself to go. Go to the degree that you abandon everything you're supposed to be doing. You are just lazing off. You are just sleeping off. You are just taking time off just because you are not in the mood. Hallelujah. God wants us to be responsible. And I want to read a few scriptures to you this afternoon as we talk about laziness. Because laziness can bring us to the place of luck. Laziness can bring us to the place of debt. Listen, I hear a lot of Christians say that, well, my breakthrough is on the way. My moment is here. My time is coming, and I'm going to hit my million dollar. Listen, faith without works is zero. You could multiply any number you want by zero. One times zero, one multiplied by zero is zero. Ten multiplied by zero is zero. A hundred thousand dollars multiplied by zero, the result is still zero. You can multiply any huge number you want by zero, the result would always be the same zero. 
It means no matter how big your faith is, if it is not accompanied by works, it yields nothing. And that is what the Bible says, he that does not work, the same must not eat. And I want to share a few things with you. In a book of uh, uh, Proverbs 24, verse 30, I want to read through to verse 34. Proverbs 24, verse 30 through 34. Bible says, I went by the field of the lazy man, and by the vineyard, or the vineyard of the man devoid of understanding, and there it was all overgrown with thorns. It, its surface was covered with nettles. Its stone walls was broken down. When I saw it, I considered it well. I looked on it and received instruction. Look at the instruction re he received. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. So shall your poverty come like a prowler or like a man traveling and your need like an armed man. So it's a gradual slope. A little folding, a little inactivity, a little slowing down. I've always said this. It's good to rest. It's good to sleep. It's good to keep this body because Bible says our bodies are the temple of the living God. And so we got to take care of it. So sleep is important. But I want you to do this math with me. There are 24 hours in a day. And if you slept eight hours every day, it means one third of the day you're sleeping. Now, if you consistently slept eight hours each day, by the time you turn 60 years, one third of that 60 years of your living would have been for sleeping. So by the time you turn 60 years, you would have slept for 20 years. Now, I want to ask you a question. For, on the average, by the time we finish high school and have maybe an associate degree, we are 20 years old. So if you've been sleeping 20 years and you've been in school for 20 years and you are 60, how many years are you working? Sleeping, laziness is a tool of the enemy. It is one of the reasons why we struggle and we are not able to fulfill our financial destiny. And that is why the Bible says, awake, ye sleeper. If you've been sleeping, and please understand laziness, it's not just being inactive. Because there are people that are very active, yet their activeness is a sign of laziness. And I'm going to read a scripture Paul talks about in the book of 2 Thessalonians. Because sometimes we think that anybody that is quiet, not too much involving, withdrawn, seems to be lazy. No. You don't have to come in full force to exhibit to the world that you are a hardworking person. No, you are doing what you got to be doing to be a prudent and a hardworking person. Because some of the things you might be called to do might be something that is not shown out there or displayed out there, yet you are being effective in the areas where you are called. And in that same way, there are people that are busy bodies. Paul talks about busy bodies. It doesn't mean they are productive. They are just busy for nothing. Look at what he says in the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse number 10 and 11. And this is the apostle Paul speaking. He says, for even when we were with you, we commanded you this. If anyone among you will not work, neither shall this person eat. If anyone doesn't want to work, he says, this same person must not eat. And I love this. He says, for we hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner. Not working at all, but are busy bodies. And so there are people that are busy bodies, and it is because they are making it look as though they are working, but they are producing nothing. So it's not what you do. It's, it's not you doing what you do, but what is the purpose of what you are doing? Because the output will determine what you are practically doing. And if the output is zero, then it means all you're going back and forth is of no effect. It is nothing. Let your fruit show your input. Let your fruit reveal that which you are doing. Your fruit would always reveal it. It is not how busy you are. It is the fruit that reveals how busy you are. Is your business an effective business? 
or you are just busy for not, no, no purpose. One more thing, and I want to share something deep in my heart to even pastors. Because some of us are pastoring churches that are not big. And I tell you what, the question is, how many sermons can we preach in a week? We have more time on our hands, even as pastors, and we can work. Why do we spend all our lives pastoring 15 to 20 people whilst we could put in, even if it's part-time, you could work. Look at what Paul says. Paul has an advice to Timothy, a young pastor. He says, but if anyone does not provide for his own, talking about his own family, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith. A lazy man cannot provide for his family. A man that is not willing to work and to generate income and only talks faith cannot take charge of his family. And he says, if you are that kind of a person, you have denied the faith. And not only have you denied the faith, he says you are worse than an unbeliever. Listen, it's time for us to work and not just work. We got to work hard. Bible says we got to be diligent. Bible says we got to work hard. Bible says that when you put your hands to the plow, you don't look back. Because when you do, you become unfit for the kingdom. Listen, this afternoon, I want to call you to a season of hard work. A season of dealing with laziness, slothfulness. Bible says, do you see a man diligent in his work? Diligence, hardworking man, a man that is focused, a man that is serious about his business, a man that is serious about his job, not a man that will go and sit in another man's business chit chatting for three hours whilst that man is chit chatting is making money. There are some of us that will spend hours in other people's business. There are some of us that will spend hours just chit chatting with people whilst they work. We become distractions to them whilst we have purposes that we need to fulfill. Laziness. How do we lazy? You spend hours on social media. You spend hours watching TV. You spend hours having leisure. Whereas you can convert these hours into productive hours. I want you to look into your life today. How productive is your life? How productive is your time? The most important gift God has given you is the gift of time. Yet it is the most perishable gift. Because yesterday is gone. You can never retrieve it. I worked for so many years in the hotel industry. And in the hotel industry, we sell rooms. We sell accommodation. We sell food. And we sell beverage. And in one of our trainings, our trainer told us, he actually asked a question, what is the most perishable product we have in this hotel? We have hotel rooms, we have food, and we have drinks or beverage. And everybody began to lift their hands. Some said the most perishable item we have in our, in our product line is food. Others said it, it's drinks. Nobody mentioned the hotel room. They say, well, if food is cooked today and nobody buys it, some of them have to be thrown in the garbage right away. It's only a few we can uh, uh, freeze it and sell tomorrow. So that makes it very perishable. Some said, well, if we prepared some uh, juices and there is a limited amount of hours, we can keep them because most of them are not shelf stable. But the trainer looked at all of us, looking at our ignorant faces and said, you know what? You could keep that food and sell it tomorrow in some cases. You could keep that drink and sell it tomorrow. But you know what? A room that is not sold today, tomorrow is another day for that same room to be sold. The income you could have made yesterday is gone. You can never have it. I'm talking about time. The most important gift God is giving you. And if yesterday is gone, you cannot bring yesterday back. Tomorrow is another day that comes with its own set of things that must be accomplished. And so don't joke with a blessing of time. Take hold of time. Do what God expects you to do. Fulfill your purpose. Pursue your passion. Have a goal for your life. Have a vision. Bible says that people of God perish for lack of vision. Time is passing away, and because we have no vision, because we have no purpose, we haven't embraced our assignment, time is just passing. 
But I want to challenge you this afternoon as you join with me in prayer. That like the children of Issachar, God will cause us to descend our days. He will call, cause us to descend our times. Sometimes Bible talks about the fact that even the birds know how to descend the seasons better than the children of God. A bird knows when it is winter. And so they migrate and go to a different place. Yet we are all in the same place. We are not moving. Remember, God is activated on our behalf by movement. As you move, God begins to act on your behalf. And so today, I want you to join me and pray with me and say, Lord, grant me the grace that was upon the children of Issachar who could discern their times and did those things that they were supposed to do even in their season. Lift up your voice with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we rebuke the spirit of laziness that has taken hold of our life where we are lazy, where we are retreated and given up on our purposes and your plans even for our lives. Lord, as we pray this afternoon, may you open our eyes and grant unto us the anointing and the grace that was upon the children of Issachar. Who knew their times? Who knew their seasons? Who knew exactly what they needed to do? For Lord, your word indeed declares that it's only a shameful son that goes to sleep in a season of harvest. May we discern our open doors. May we discern our season. May we discern the season of our harvest. And may we not go to sleep in this season. The season you've given to us that we may experience of heavenly supply. Lord, I pray for your people that are gathered here and those that are tuning in right now that the eyes of their understanding may be open, that we may understand this season, that we may understand the purpose of time, that we may understand why we need to be hardworking Christians and not lazy Christians. May we understand that you do not bless laziness, you bless hard work. And may we receive the grace to work diligently in our ministries. May we work diligently on the job. May we work diligently in our businesses in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for grace. I pray for strength. I pray for the will that comes out of the Holy Spirit. May we have that will and that grace to pursue after the things you've called us to, even in the mighty name of Jesus. This afternoon, I pray for pastors. And listen to me, man of God, some of us feel embarrassed to take on a job. It doesn't take anything away from you. You have enough time to do more. Your children are looking up to you. Your, your spouse is looking up to you. Your entire family is looking up to you. The church is not at a place to take care of you the way they ought to. And there is no reason why your family must struggle because of laziness. Today, receive strength. Today, receive confidence and launch out like Paul did. Paul was a lawyer, he was a pastor, he was an apostle, yet he took on uh, 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 minor jobs. He took jobs that were not fancy in his days. He was a tent maker. He took on jobs that most people in his days wouldn't want to be associated with because sometimes we want fancy job, but receive the confidence and the grace, man of God, to take on jobs so that God will bless the work of your hands, bless you financially and grant you fulfillment to be even able to bless the work of God so that the work of God in your hands will begin to expand into areas you have never been able to go to. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for everyone listening to me this afternoon that the grace of God comes upon you that you may be able to do more to support first of all your family and to support the work of God in the mighty name of Jesus. This afternoon I want you to continue praying don't stop the anointing of the Lord is on. The anointing of the Lord is right here. Continue praying and receive power. Receive the grace of God to do more. Receive the grace of God to work in the places God has anointed you to work. Don't give up. God wants you to do more in this season. 
And listen to me, child of God, as you do more in this season, you're going to see God come through for you in ways you have never encountered. God is going to use the, the gift of hard work, diligence to bring you out of death, out of death, even in this season. Man of God, God wants to do the same with you in the area he's called you to, to fulfill. So don't give up. Put your best foot forward, child of God. And listen, as you do so, you will see the glory of God manifested in ways you have never encountered. Listen, I love you. God bless you. Keep on keeping on. I look forward to seeing you right here tomorrow, same time, 12 o'clock for our midday connection. God bless you. Grace and peace to you. Shalom. <laughs>